there is a ticking time bomb in some of the largest sectors of the economy, affecting the international markets of billion dollar industries. Times are changing. The internet age is not only redefining lifestyles and politics, it's also completely transforming the economy. Traditional markets are being overhauled by the rapid sharing of information backed up by new scientific studies which are creating unprecedented demand many industries are not prepared for. Today we are exploring what seems to be an unstoppable trend driven by science and the internet which is projected to have a dramatic effect on the direction of some of the biggest sectors of the economy. What was once dismissed as pseudoscience by mainstream media and the scientific world could be about to revolutionize the agricultural sectors of the world while completely redefining the commercial flower and plant industries and putting the landscape and gardening markets on the verge of unprecedented changes, causing a life-changing economic impact for markets around the world. So what is changing these relatively stable and traditional sectors so dramatically? Well, it comes down to something very simple we use every day, and that's electricity. And what is known as electroculture or electro gardening. These incredible photos show gigantic vegetables grown using electroculture techniques. And it's photos like these, combined with compelling new scientific research and studies from around the world, which are driving the current surge in interest. Electroculture is not a new concept. Although it may sound strange at first, applying electricity to growing food has a long history. For example, its potential was highlighted by Nikola Tesla, who praised its benefits for increasing yields, enhancing taste, and improving resistance to pests. In today's show, we will be exploring its historical origins, taking a look at the new research and scientific studies into its uses, and show how it's being applied by enthusiasts around the world, and will include some simple ways you can use electroculture to improve growing yourself in your own garden with a few simple methods that don't even require a connection to the electrical grid. Electroculture or electro gardening is a gardening method that uses electricity to promote healthy plant growth. It can be done by electrifying the plant, water or soil directly, or by creating an electromagnetic field around the plant. Electroculture is by no means a new concept with experiments on its application going back over 200 years in several different countries on different types of plants and crops. A technique that used electricity to enhance plant growth and health was first presented in 1749 by Abbe Nolet, a French physicist and clergyman who was one of the first to experiment with the effects of electricity on plant growth by growing plants under charged terminals. Also in 18th century France, Abbe Pierre Bertillon created a device for watering plants with electrified water, which was delivered from an insulated barrel on a trolley, which was moved between his rows of vegetables. He published the Electricité de Végétaux in 1783, which included a description of the first electroculture tool, the electro vegetometer, which collected electricity from the atmosphere with small lightning conductors, which distributed the charge around his garden. In the 1930s, it was promoted by Justine Christophe Fleur, a French engineer and inventor who claimed that his system of electroculture could increase crop yields by up to 200% without any chemical fertilizer, while preventing diseases, rejuvenating plants, hasten crops and improve germination. Explaining his system and how to do it in his book Electroculture published in 1927. Marcel Violet was a French engineer who did research on electroculture in the 1930s and 40s, developing a water treatment device he called a bio-oscillator, which sent electrical discharges from a capacitor made of beeswax as a dielectric. He believed the treated water increased the growth rate of plants, gave them a much better resistance against bacteria, viruses and parasites taking these photos to demonstrate the difference. In this picture, we can see untreated potatoes and potatoes that have been sprayed with treated water, which have far more growth. And in this photo, we can see two carrots that were untreated on the left 
and on the right we can see a carrot where the seeds were soaked for 8 hours using treated water with the bioosculator before being planted, which is substantially larger. And it was explored by Victor Schauberger, an Austrian naturalist and inventor, during the 1940s. Proposed that water could be magnetized to enhance plant growth. He developed devices like a copper brass bioplow and a copper coral antenna, which were designed to improve soil fertility and plant growth by using electroculture. In Japan in the 1950s, metal rods were used to increase the yield of mushrooms by twofold. In Mexico, Don Jose Carmen has achieved remarkable results combining electroculture with ancestral indigenous techniques, succeeding to consistently grow cabbages of up to 40 kilograms and maize of more than 4 meters in height without pesticides or chemical fertilizers, which you can see in these photos. Since the end of the Second World War, the science community and mainstream media have broadly dismissed electroculture as a pseudoscience. However, in the last few years, a flurry of exciting new research has reignited interest in its merits. In Brazil, researchers have used electrostatic fields to improve the quality and yield of lettuce plants. In Australia, researchers have used magnetic fields to increase the germination rate and biomass of wheat seeds. In India, a study has examined the successful impact of electric and magnetic field exposure on young plants during their germination, growth and photosynthesis. And in South Korea, a new study has shown electric fields can improve the efficiency of wastewater purification by substantially improving the efficiency of ammonia removal. In China in 2022, triboelectric nanogenerators were used on peas, increasing the yield by 20%. And in 2023, Lakovsky coils were applied to corn growing, increasing the yield by 300% resulting in a team of researchers affiliated with multiple institutions in China reporting that electroculture can indeed increase agricultural yields, with one scientist going as far as saying a golden age is dawning for the technology. Electroculture's economic potential is poised to have an unprecedented impact, as its large-scale adoption will have enormous implications for the economy and the environment as electroculture can reduce or even eliminate the need for fertilizer and pesticides while increasing yield. The global fertilizer market is estimated at 193 billion US dollars, while the global pesticide market is estimated at roughly 105 billion, with both being held responsible for significantly damaging the environment and the health of millions of people who have to work with them. Inspired by the recent confirming studies, Electroculture is increasing in popularity, gaining renewed interest from researchers, farmers and hobbyists looking for alternative and sustainable ways to improve their agriculture, and many of the techniques are accessible enough for you to test out for yourself. Some of the popular electroculture methods are magnetic antennas, which use metal wires or rods to create a vertical antenna that attracts atmospheric electricity. Another popular device is the Lakoski coils which use copper coils to create a circular antenna that emits electromagnetic waves to the plants and soil. Some have been using direct electricity injection, which uses electrodes to apply a direct current or a pulsed electric field to the soil or the plant, while others have been experimenting with energy towers, which uses metal towers or poles to create a large-scale antenna that covers a wide area of land. Some are using crushed basalt, rock or powder to enrich the soil with minerals and enhance its conductivity, while others have been using magnetized water by using magnets to treat water before irrigating the plants. What do you think? And let us know in the comments if you have been experimenting with electroculture yourself and please share with us the beneficial effects that you've noticed. Thanks for watching.